have to check with others before opening a window? If questions like this have crossed your mind, then you're in good company. Today we'll be taking a closer look at some of the daily habits and social conventions that make up the monotony of life. Let's tear out one page from an exercise book and ruin its whole integrity. Grab your knitting needles and a blanket because it's time for three old friends to sit around and sew a new patch into their quilt of friendship. So join me, Dion, under the covers with Christian... Welcome to Patchwork. ...and Josh... Welcome to Patchwork. Now, before, before we get started, we treat Patchwork as a bit of a playground. And for this patch, we had a, an idea that we would try to come up each individually with a catchphrase. We wouldn't tell each other what the catchphrase is, but we'd have to drop it somewhere into this patch. And by the end, hopefully we're able to guess each other's catchphrase. Patchphrase, if you will. <laughs> now, before we get started, Christian... Uh, we have, uh, obviously, Patchwork social media accounts, mm. and you don't have social media, and that must be really difficult when you're trying to contact a restaurant, um, Christian. <laughs> I try to get it's, involved politically. Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, it's quite easy, Dion. Well, it is quite easy, because what Christian does is he hijacks the Patchwork <laughs> social serious? media accounts, hijacks them like you do a plane, and he would <laughs> co- and he contacts that restaurant asking for, for bookings and dietary requirements and all this kind of stuff. But the weird thing is, is that Christian, when they don't respond, straight away he gets really frustrated when they don't reply to him on social media i'm christian my bone to pick if you like with you is i got a bone to pick why don't you just call him uh that's a great question if you're a restaurateur you're in the hospitality game you're not in the you're not in the hoot suite game <laughs> <But this> is- <laughs> For those who don't know uh, Hoot Sweet, what is it, Dion? It's a social I media mean, platform. Or, or it could be a catchphrase. I <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know. We'll know at the end of the episode. Um, but Christian, yeah, oh, when you're in hospitality, it's... you just want to... Just, hospitality people, they love picking up a phone, okay. don't they? Uh, there's, there's a few... Yeah, there's a few reasons here. The first is that it's pre-preliminary f- investigation, right? So it's before I've even started properly thinking. I don't want to bother them with a call. So this is pre-preliminary. I'm, yeah, this is what? pre-preliminary. It's I'm like just the before, thinking, before we get started. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've just had a very quick idea and I'm like, I wonder whether they do this. I'll shoot them off a message on Instagram. Yeah. When they get to it, they get to it. What frustrates me is how shocking most of the responses are. But... They, they, it's I a know. restaurant. It's a bloody restaurant. That should be but, shocking. But have, you ever, have you ever been at a restaurant and you've seen one of the staff on their phone? They reply to your message. Mate. Yeah, that's right. You're interrupting service. But that's the thing is when you call them, I get flustered that I'm not going to ask the question correctly. I always, anytime I'm calling a stranger with a very specific question in my mind, yeah. I overthink how I should phrase the question to make it easiest for them to understand. Just on that, you know what I do? Josh, I wonder if you do this in terms of efficiency. If I want to ask a question and it's got a couple of different components to it, I'll mash it all into the one sentence. So, for instance, when I want to go play golf, what I'll do is I'll call up the golf club and I'll say, hi, I'm just wondering... um, are you guys open today? And if you are, um, how many balls get... And it's kind of like, oh. it just rolls on and on and on. And then I did that the other day and they were like, sorry, sorry, there's too many, too many parts of that question. You'll have to rephrase Yeah, it. you got to do one at a time. No, I think... Really? I can, yeah. No, I can understand why you do it. It's because you want them to know there's more questions. So even yeah. if they flag it at the start, whoa, 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 too many questions, they know... This guy's got more. That's right, but I'm but I'm sort of thinking they've like in my head they've got a notepad there and then writing yeah. down each of the like computer code, code. Yeah, that's if right. or and <laughs> based as you go. Um, can I can I just run you both through some of the mm. messages that I've shot off? Oh well, I mean Josh mightn't have seen it, but I've seen them. So yeah, but you can run the listeners uh, through it. It's just been they're not rooibos. They're, they're not up to rooibos standard. Yeah, yeah. Because to be honest, they just haven't been responding to me. Okay, but. I have written, I've made sure to write very clear messages with clear questions for them to respond to. Bulleted? Bullet points? No, 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 but just, but with punctuation, Dion. Good, I like to hear that. (laughs) I don't. So it's two falafel restaurants in Melbourne. The first, I say, hi, falafel team. Just wondering if you're open on Tuesday and whether you guys do any catering. We've got about 15 people coming over for lunch and I'd love to put an order in if you do. Sorry, couldn't see anything on the website. Response, hello, yes, we will be open 11 till 9. <laughs> My yes, response, great. great, thanks so much for the response. Do you offer catering services Jesus. or would you suggest just coming in and ordering a few family packs? No response. Scene. What's going on? Nah, but give him a call. But like, what? Like, that is reading half of your initial message, reading one bit, just replying to as yep. quick as you can. Yep. 
How many of those? How many of them are they getting a day? It they're doesn't just, matter. They're just, business. They're opening chickpeas. Too they're bad. like they've got better things this to is, do. So this second one is even worse because they're actively trying not to get business yeah, here. That's weird. I find that weird when business do that. Number two, another falafel restaurant. Hey, uh. <laughs> that's your opening. That's yours. Yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> not sure if you're open or providing catering for Tuesday, but I was looking to book catering for 15 people. I couldn't get the form to submit on the site, so just emailing this through. I hope that's okay. If possible, I'd also like to request vegan salads. That would be great. Let me know if that's possible. Signed, Andre 3000. <laughs> <laughs> response, hi, Christian. We closed on Tuesday. So my response... Do you think if I picked it up on Monday afternoon that I could keep it all in the fridge for serving on Tuesday? Are you open on Monday? Mm. Response. Unfortunately, I would not recommend that. Yeah, that's fair because it won't be fresh. What do you mean? Say that. Hey, hey, unfortunately, it probably won't be as fresh. You could do that, but we don't want to be held accountable. Josh. What do you think? Is a phone call better use of c- communication in this? Based on those text responses, I'm very concerned about the quality of the call that Christian would get. Thank you. There would Interesting. Be, there would be noises in the background. There'd be half listing, half paying attention. I don't understand why you've clearly put a lot of effort into your messages. As we've talked about this before, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. those responses, as well from a business, it's like as minimum effort as possible. C- can I just raise a point? These messages are coming from... Welcome to Patchwork Comedy Podcast. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like, w- when they see that, they're probably bemused, and then they're probably like, oh, is this a prank? I think it might be what? a prank. But why would... Why <laughs> a prank would it be mess- a prank? We're going to prank because message. Because why would such a courteous uh, message be a prank? Why would you write a message about falafel from a podcast? Unless yeah, it's- that's, that's what we've got as a podcast. We do prank messages <laughs> instead of prank calls. <laughs> prank inquiries. <laughs> but they're all legitimate. <laughs> I, I still don't know if, given those responses, the call, the call I think, mm. the best thing about the call is the immediacy of it. You can get an answer then and there straight away. That's probably not what Christian's struggling with because he's established that when they get to it, they'll reply to me. This is pre-preliminary mm. messaging. Yeah. But I think the call is great if you're in a pinch and you just want to get some fa- hard facts quick. Well, that's the thing, right? And sometimes you call and they're not going to, the person who answers doesn't know, oh, maybe can you call back a bit later? This way here, you get the email and they go, I'm not the right person to respond. Mm. Hey, can someone respond to this? They're asking about catering. With these inquiries, though, you get either a mixture of like inept reply or no reply as well. Yeah. Like, you get, you, you so go, how do I contact them? Call them and don't hear a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just the sound of falafels frying. <laughs> Occasionally on Welcome to Patchwork, we like to do impressions of inanimate objects or Mm. famous uh, sounds. (laughs) For example, Tim Allen's grunt uh, from Home Improvement. Famous sounds. (laughs) How else would you describe Tim Allen's grunt? It's a very accurate description. We're just rubbish. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the other thing. We're all rubbish of them. What was the last one that we did? I think it was a... Phone vibrating yeah, phone on a table. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, so what what no, do we got? Not, oh, no, yours is the sexy mosquito. <laughs> so what do we got this week, Christian? Uh, this week we're doing a ghost motorcycle. <laughs> Josh, as per always, as the as the winner of every yeah. week, would you like to kick us off? Okay. So sometimes they're trying to emulate a very real thing. This is a bit more out of the box, but, but we, we the, think you'll get the ghost motorcycle. Yeah, it's who can conceptually grasp the concept Wait, it, it's a ghost motorcycle coming out of the box. <laughs> is that what it is? is that, okay. No, no, ghost motorcycle. <laughs> okay, great. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Yamaha ghost motorcycle. Yeah, uh, Christian. Okay. <clears throat> That's great. That you you put in you put in prep into that. That, You're been listening to motorcycles. I saw you the other day. (laughs) I've been watching Casper. (laughs) Dion, my catchphrase is just about to come out. By the way, (laughs) you can't tell us. Yeah, I know. No, I know. You you wouldn't pick it. Oh God, what the fuck? I want again. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Christian won that think, for I sure. Think it's safe to say I think, that and I think it's safe to say Dion lost. I lost it, 100%. <laughs> 
over the lockdown period in Melbourne, I thought it was about time to try something that I've always wanted to try, which is to shave my hair clean <laughs> off. And it was just so coincidental that I was also going bald, so it, it was probably the oh, right time. I would have put you in a um, and so I did. I sh- I've shaved and I've kept the look. I like the look. It's yep. a good look. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you, you look great. Thanks, yeah, mate. You look great. It's you needed a bit of convincing. You're like, oh, I should do this. It looks it, looks gorgeous. So I I shaved the entire way down. I went with a razor to the scalp. Mm. Scalp. I didn't go to the scalp. <laughs> <laughs> Just the skin right off. I'll tell you what, it's a lot bloodier than I expected. <laughs> Jeepers creepers. Um. So I went all the way down to uh, scalp, and I. Thought to myself, well, there's fresh skin here. I've got to do a bit of moisturizing. Mm. And I don't often moisturize any part of my body. Yep. But I see people do it and I'm jealous. I feel like I'm missing out on something. So I put moisturizer on my bald scalp <laughs> and it felt like I was wearing a hat. <laughs> it made me sweat heaps. <laughs> It, I don't oh. know whether I did it wrong or whether it's the wrong moisturizer. What did you put on? But it was heavy. It felt like it was hurting my neck to hold it up. <laughs> I, do you guys? So that's why I wanted to ask you guys. Do you guys moisturize? Not your not your do, scalp. Do, do you guys moisturize your bald heads? <laughs> <laughs> but do you moisturize? And do you know what I've done wrong? I only moisturize when I'm offered moisturizer. It never occurs to mm. me to moisturize. Yep. When my partner like she'll have a little thing of beeswax or whatever it is, she'll and I'll be like, yeah, sure. But I don't notice when my skin is dry. It's not something I notice, and maybe it's something I should be aware of. What about you, Josh? Sounds like the bees have got great skin. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And poor (laughs) paws. The only time I used to was when I would, after I'd shaved with the, you know, blade, so I'd get back to you know, clear skin on the face and not moisturize after that. But otherwise, no moisturizing going on at all. No mm. moisturizing at all. Yeah. No. So I've tried to do it since on my hands. Same thing. Just get very clammy yep. and hot and bothered. So my question with the hand moisturizing, are you meant to do it on the palm side as well or just the top? Because the oh. palm seems silly because oh. you're using that a lot. Oh, I don't think there should be any palm oil in the, in the moisturizer. <laughs> That's not something you'd... Save the orangutans. <laughs> No, but oh, do the orangutans have great skin they as well? They have amazing skin. <laughs> They're the best skin. Are you meant to do the palm? Um, I didn't. I think so because a lot of times, if I'm shaking someone's hand, and then they say and they oh, recoil, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess they don't really say you've got dry skin, but I feel as though you can tell when you shake someone's hand. Oh, that's rough, or oh, that's soft and supple. So I think that surely there's moisturizer on some people's palms. Do you know what the weird thing is, uh, Josh? I feel like this will align with your sort of belief system. It's like my, I always reference my grandfather and myself. He was 99. He had a really, really good life, and he never moisturized. I don't think. And it's mm. kind of like then again, old people they always have Vaseline nearby, don't <laughs> oh, they? They certainly do. Very strange. They have, yeah, very strange yeah. to have motor oil near your bedside <laughs> table. Um, but uh, he never moisturized, and he was fine. And it's kind of like, do you actually? And there's going to oh, be people out there screaming, yep. screaming right now. But do you really need to? Is it is moisturizing just a comfort thing for most people? I know some people will need to. Some people will have dry skin, but for for the majority of people, do you need to do it? Well, that's like from. I think we're all speaking from a very privileged position yes. here, where we haven't probably needed to do that but i also think is it because people have started that they need to continue doing it i actually don't yeah. know well, that's what happened with yeah. like we spoke about a long time ago oh, my yeah. chapstick that it really stuffed up my lips and then when i oh, when man. i went went off the chap <laughs> um, yeah my lips really stuffed for quite a while so I, I reckon if you moisturize a lot you might get into the habit of your body being like hey where's the moisturizer come on do yeah you know, do you know i don't know if this word's been mentioned on the podcast do you know what cuticles are yeah uh yeah you both know what they are? Yeah, the thing... The, 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 the Yeah, see, yeah. that's another thing, right? There's moisturiser just for cuticles. I'm sorry. Oh, really? Isn't that strange? How huh. different is that from the rest of your skin or What's your bald apply- head? Is it like a little um, <laughs> super glue applier, like a little nozzle on the end? <laughs> you, uh, what are you... Have we talked about super glue? <laughs> <laughs> What? Maybe not now. <laughs> Maybe not now. Save it for the bonus patch. Oh, bonus patch bonus to talk patch. super glue. <laughs> Perfect. Super glue, sure. fine. Wait, with cuticles? Uh, yeah, I think so. We, we, so one, we can do anything. Do you know one thing I've realised now that I'm looking intently at my hand is missing is the little white ball at the end of the of the fingernails where they join the cuticles. Yeah. yeah. That little, that, I've always seen that as a sign of health, right? And mine are missing. Do you know what I just found out yesterday? <laughs> I found out that that my nails, if you have a look at them, I'll post post my nails on social media, (laughs) but I've got like this, um, 
Have a look. It's all rough. The nail. It looks like it's been. Oh, it oh, looks like, it's, like got... it's been built on a three D printer. <laughs> Do you reckon? Look at that. And oh, apparently, used to have, like, yes, like yes. little, almost like pin pricks, almost yeah. in it, right? Yeah. Apparently, I... it's just a sign. This is all it is. It's just a sign of aging. Yes. No. How about that? What did you have? Pin pricks. It kind of looked like oh, pin little pricks. white things. No, no, no. Like little indents. I remember. I think I used to have that on a on a fingernail as a kid or something. Oh, and it's gone. Yeah, yeah. I think it's gone. Do I guess lose, I grew out of it. Yeah. <laughs> do you lose baby fingernails and then the adult <laughs> ones come in? <laughs> is that what happens? I got braces on my yeah. fingernails. Just kept my hand together. <laughs> Um, but one moisturizing kind of thing I used to use quite legitimately was paw paw. Is it ointment or cream? It's ointment, isn't it? Oh, it's a fruit, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's it's oil. It's a no. Well, oh, I had like God. a cre- I had like a cre- it was like a creamy yep. stuff. Anyway, because I have psoriasis, so when I was younger, I used to put it on over those. Pa- and it actually worked incredibly well for improving the psoriasis. But I didn't care enough, and I didn't keep it up. That's the only oh. time I've really. And I did, I did the thing that I've always said I wanted to do yep. of I did like a split test. I was like, pauper on the left knee, nothing oh, on the right. Really? And the left got way better. Some AB testing. Yeah, it really was. Wow. Some uh, A-knee testing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see, like, I wonder whether, was this an issue thousands and thousands of years ago? Like, was Homo erectus walking around with psoriasis going and dip, <laughs> dipping, he, dipping his knees into pawpaws? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a good point, though. But I feel like back in the day, they would have had back in the day. What a fray. <laughs> Isn't that just a, like a articulation, a I, summary I, of ignorance? I hope like, that's not your catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but um, back in the day, they would have had plants that, you know, they would have had aloe vera. Yeah, they just rub it on. Yeah. But they probably didn't know what they were doing. No, someone with aloe vera, someone would have fallen down. Someone and would have been running. They would have been running along and they would have tripped and they would have got this big cut and then instantly repaired with, aloe, <laughs> with an aloe vera plant. Yeah, that's what's happened. I reckon that's what's happened. Mate, that stinks. <laughs> <laughs> really good. The other thing talking about self-care and stuff, um, one thing that I've recently changed is my deodorant. And I'm trying out a few different ones. <laughs> so from ones. your mum's roll-on deodorant, <laughs> yeah, back yeah, in yeah. patch, whatever it was. To... <laughs> so, yeah, what I'm at now, I thought, look, give them all a go. <laughs> it was so... just, he just had to drive over at his mum's place every time he wanted to put that deodorant. It's really inconvenient now, guys. We don't even live together. <laughs> Why have you moved back in your, with your mum? Um... <laughs> but I'm going from the spray and there's the ball, the ball roll-on, which you know, the wet sort of roll-on with like the, the ballpoint ball pen. It's like a ballpoint pen. Yeah. Um, and then there's the block as well. The block? And I'm trying I out- I hate how you say the block. What is the block? It's like the big white chunky thing. It's like, the, it's like the chalky one. I've never seen that TV show. Is that what it is? <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 Search yeah. It's Scott Cab selling deodorants. <laughs> yeah. it is. Um, but what, I, what I've coming to realise, like I think I like the ball roll-on. It smells really, very the fresh. Wet one? Yeah. Oh, it's got nothing to do with it. That. The, that specifically doesn't smell fresh. I just think the it one does. that you picked. No, but I find it it's a it's a good I get you a good amount fresh. of it. Yeah. I think you feel fresh because it goes yeah, on wet and then there's the, the wind. The, the wind. <laughs> the house wind. I think the block, the, the T V show is one of my No, I reckon the block, the deodorant, I reckon that is the that is the king or queen of deodorants. But it's just that end. The final quarter of it. Oh, what, do you, what do you do dreadful. with it? It's just going everywhere. And you know, and when it starts falling out, oh, it's shocking! Oh, it's shocking. It's a crumble. Shocking. The crumble. Yeah, it is a crumble. Get out of it. Block, yep. One block crumble, please. <laughs> um, do you like popping other people's pimples? I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, do you know what? I uh, Christian will get to that. I was uh, arrived at a bar with three friends, and the fourth friend arrived and said, "Oh, Dion, you got a pimple on your forehead." <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that an amazing thing to point out? Just straight up. Yeah, it's like like I didn't, of course I mentioned, like I I noticed it before I left home, but just said it straight up. Was it in front of everyone else or privately to you? in front of everyone else. Hang on, but that's not embarrassing, is it? Like, wouldn't you want to know that you've got a big pimple on your forehead? What can can you do at that point? Pop it. I'd not. I'm not going to pop it there. Why not? I tell you what, popping a pimple in public, if you're on a tram or something and it's on the... On your head or something, and you're trying to pop it, and like it's just Don't it's do, amazing. No, pops no only happening at home. Oh, Christian said no <laughs> good. He's testing the waters. He does it. <laughs> you do it in public, don't you? Yeah, I'll do it in public. I'll do oh, it. Oh, come on, Christian, put it back in the tackle box. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> mate. That's is. sick. There it that is. is sick. There it is. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> So you're popping in public. I'm, I'll pop in public, and I'll also I also like when people ask to be popped. I don't mind popping others. <laughs> I think I think a pop is a very private at home thing. <laughs> but I think Dion, there's the, the key thing with that phrase. What you got told, you can't do anything about it at that point. 
you, you probably already know, and if you didn't, you'd probably notice when you got home, but to be told there's a pimple on your face, yeah, you can't weird. do anything but about it. It was weird. No, but I no, I think that's a nice thing to do. Go, Dion, you got a pimple on your head because you may be... <laughs> what? You may so, be so running p- into... Put a hat on. Well, Hang so on. Since I left home, I've just... Oh, just a developing story. you got a pimple on your head. <laughs> it might be. Quick tweet about it. Well, how, how quickly are these things... Hang on. If it looks hideous, maybe he's saving you some face from your meeting like a, a prospective employee. Don't, don't announce it to the pub, which he did. <laughs> On the table, on the PA. <laughs> but Christian, what is Dion with that information? Sorry, could you do that PA announcement, please? <laughs> could the owner of a white pimple on a phone please come and pop it? You've left your lights on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, but Christian, what is Dion meant to do with that information and that moment? Uh, pop it. Like I said, pop the pimple. That go, doesn't fix go, anything. Where, whereabouts is it? Cool. Can you uh, put the mirror on my phone? Yep. Bong. Bizarre. It does fix it. The pimple goes no, it away. It doesn't. It's I'm, still there. If it's if it's juicy and ready, <laughs> as, if, as if that's not more exciting than spending time at a pub with friends. Uh, it's just so funny. Just imagine Christian with a thermometer, like a food thermometer. Just go, I think it's juicy and ready. <laughs> Let me just skewer it with this fork. Oh, it's come out dry. <laughs> Ah, uh, hi. Hi, how are you going? Shh, could you keep your voice down? Okay, sorry, sorry. Um, I was just wanted to, um, I couldn't find it on the shelves anywhere. I was wanting to borrow a motorcycle. Um, a guide to motorcycles? No, no. History of motorcycles? No, just, just a motorcycle. Oh, so just a single motorcycle? Yeah, I couldn't see it. So yeah. we've got a section sorry, on sorry, Ducati's. Sorry, excuse me. Sorry, we've got a few people trying to read. Do you mind just keeping it down a little bit? I, yeah, sorry, sorry. Sorry, can I just... I'm sorry? <laughs> so I understand that you're my manager, but also, do you mind keeping it down? <laughs> <laughs> Please, no lie, lie. Okay, sorry. Um, so just books about motorcycles, individual no, no, motorcycles. No, no, no. And I, I'm, you. It's the library, right? You lend things out, and I can borrow from it. The library. Yeah, yeah. Books, books. Yeah. We we no, also have DVDs now and, and Blu-rays. TV. Oh, a TV. So you, you, no, 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 not a TV. Yeah, maybe I'll get a TV instead. <laughs> instead of a motorcycle. Sorry, excuse me. I'm gonna <laughs> have to ask you. Can to, we all just keep it down. I'm gonna have to ask you to just come a bit closer because oh, you're speaking a little bit too loud. Sorry. And we've got some. We've actually got the oldest. Sorry person in the world <laughs> so, reading the, um, the Australians. Um, sorry, sir. Do you mind if I just have a quick aside with my manager? Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, come in. So, sorry. <laughs> this, uh, this gentleman would like to, I think, I think he's trying to hire a motorcycle or a TV. Trying to hire... <laughs> um, not, I'm not entirely sure how to, how to handle this one here. Um, Without raising my voice. Well, I think the first thing we need to do, if you could just keep your... <laughs> just keep your voice. <laughs> um, yeah. The first thing you have to do is that we... There is a motorcycle on one of the back shelves. Hey, we are. We are renting out motorcycles. <laughs> we are. <laughs> does it have a Dewey Decimal number? It does. It okay, does. Yeah. Sure. I'll just quickly get the... He's still... He's literally right next to us. Hey guys, sorry. Could you hear all of that? Um, no, I, I caught. I heard one word, which was motorcycle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, um, yeah, we also said Dewey as well. <coughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, you are in luck. We great. do. Uh, oh, fantastic! Hire out motorcycles. That's so great. Um, let's just make sure that it it works before we rent it out. <laughs> okay. Well, if but, you could, oh. but don't do it outside. Please do it inside. Okay, sure. We'll just very quickly, quietly, <laughs> start start it up. <laughs> quietly start your engines. <laughs> I was cooking some breakfast the other morning and the eggs and the steam and the heat, it was all very much getting blown around in the kitchen. I thought, I'm going to open the back door. The range hood isn't doing enough here. I'm going to open the door. It still wasn't enough. I thought, I'm opening the window as well. And it made me realize there are very particular circumstances under which I will open a window. Cooking is one of them. In the bedroom, for instance, often it will just be... Oh, well, oh, okay. <laughs> it'll be just to get some fresh air through, right? Yep. Just, just to it's a bit, a bit in stuffy there. in there, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit stuffy. So I'll do that. But I was wondering if you guys do you identify times when you will open a window that you go? What goes through your brain when you're like, I'm just going to open the window here? 
I reckon there is nothing like opening a window when there's a cool change. It's been oh, a really oh, hot dear. day. End of the day, you almost want to you want to you want to do more than open a window. You want to just bash in all the windows I and have, just have yeah. complete through. That, I have moments yeah. on that that I literally go through the whole house and go just open them all up. Oh, yeah. that's a real. Doozy. Did, did you have parents that told you that that were like just like at certain intervals in your life, just to back. just open up all the windows? Well, you got to get the airflow through the house. Yeah, front door, back door, everything's open. It is unbelievable what a good. Friend Front door, back door, open combo will do for a house. Just, just, just that fresh. That's why if I'm like you, you say, are there ever circumstances that you'll open a window? I think entering a room. Anytime <laughs> I enter a room, I'll look for all available windows to open. If they're not bolted shut, you're yeah. shooting them open. Yeah, because really? just just a nice crisp flow of it. As if this is a shock to you. I had my door open yeah, with yeah. the heater on. Yeah. When there's an air conditioner True. on, so, I'll try to open a window as well. Strange. So we're in the midst of summer right now, and it's clear that like more often than not, probably window opens a good idea. We don't have air conditioning sure. in our house. But in winter, you're still opening the windows, Christian? Yeah, because it's a it's a I like that fresh air feeling. And how about you, Dion? Winter, summer, what's the window situation? Uh, it, it's more that, like, at, at home, like, I like to have the window open sometimes ajar at night. A crack? A, a no, crack no, in the window? No, no, a jar in the window. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I think it's to get that constant freshness. But I was thinking, like, does oxygen change? If you've got stuffy air, yes. does that change the composition of... Does that change the, the, no, no, the no, periodic no, no. table, the chemical? No, no it doesn't. Oh, come no, on, Dion, put it back in the tackle what, box. What? <laughs> <laughs> I I don't think it I think it yeah it definitely changes it like you can you can taste the air no right? no 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 like the, t- like Dion's question was is the chemical composition of the air different yes no it's still majority nitrogen no 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 that's I didn't say majority did I Christian what do you what do you ask it to oxygen change chemical properties Stop, no more science <laughs> let's back away from this that's very true. quickly that's true I think for me one of the more interesting cases of opening up a window when you should open it up is when you're on public transport when you're on a bus Ooh. or a tram or probably most controversially a train I reckon when you're going through a tunnel and sometimes, like, you, the window's open. Sometimes you've got to shut it really quickly because of the racket it makes. But oh. do you need to check with other people if you like to open the window? On, on public transport. On public transport. Do you need to check with other people? Well, let's start, let's start, uh, uh, let's in start a more, small. Let's start smaller in a more personal circumstance. Yep. When you're in someone's car, do you need to ask them permission? Fantastic. You're in the back seat. Fantastic. They're the driver. It's their car. I think it's if you're in the back suffocating... Hey, can we get a bit of air back here? Presumably you can say that. As well. Hey, can we get a bit of air back here? <laughs> so I think, I think you're more than welcome to open your window. But if the air con's on or not cranked enough, I think maybe you request more air conditioning. But otherwise, I think it's up to whoever seat you're in, you can choose to open your window. Oh, really? Yeah. So, but see, that what annoys me is when people make that decision with all three other windows up. Yeah. Oh, the and then they have that weird effect. Vibraphone thing. Yeah, yeah that Heimler's oh, I really, effect. I really like that sound. Really? Nah, it's horrible. <laughs> Do you know it's the exact same effect as when you're blowing into a bottle? You know how you can get that... Did you say the Heimlich effect? It's not Heimlich. It's that's like... A, that's, that's, that's a manoeuvre. <laughs> that's a manoeuvre. That's not the effect. <laughs> um... But it's, oh, really? it's the same exact thing. same as when you're blowing into a bottle, making that So God, God is the blower God and is, our car yeah. is the bottle. Correct. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that uh, it, you have to, you must ask permission. For the crack. driver? Yes. But yeah. I, I think as the driver, I get very reactive. So if, if I don't want that, I, if, if they open, I go, well, I'll crack mine a little bit to stop that effect. No, but that's or passive. I'll, it's so I'll passive. I'll request, I'll go, hey, I'll, I'll crank up the aircon a bit. And, uh, and then I fiddle with the thing back there. To, Sorry? To, <laughs> to make, what are you fiddling I, with? I have a, like a, a thing that blows air into the back. Event, I'm, Jesus! I'm always really surprised though. Like I, I went to Tasmania. I actually, got a bit of a, t- a quick tale from Tasmania. Oh, do you want to do an intro? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Tales, Tales from, from Tasmania. Tasmania. Great. Um, but I went to Tasmania and had a hire car and was fiddling around with the. the Can you the, both stop fiddling? <laughs> fiddling around <laughs> with the air conditioner and stuff, and I just would. There's something like climate control. It just doesn't do the job. It. I don't feel like I don't have a connection. To air conditioners I don't feel mm. connected to them but And I feel like I should be able To get in a shower Have we talked about this Every time I get in the shower I should be able to press a button Same temperature comes on Same temperature every time I should yeah. be able to get that in the car But it doesn't seem but to think, know me But the difference <laughs> Like the car window Generally I think On a cooler day That's fine When it's a really hot day I actually don't mind The heaps of hot air Blowing through I kind of find that enjoyable It is nice What's your ideal 
car window setup. Let's say if you're the driver, what are all the windows doing? Well, I think for me, the the four windows are fully open. That is, I love really? everything wide open. Oh, I can, down to the bottom? Down to the bottom. I put my arm up. Over the top. Oh, it's a good and look. I, and I cruise. But then, you, then, you, then everything in your car is flying around. What have you got in your car that's flying oh, around? Seat belts, parrots. I'll, I'll tell you what I've got in my Guess car. Guess nonnas. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's crazy. That's so disruptive. That's mental. No, it's great, but you're, you're in the elements. But oh then God. you can't listen what, to music. What would you like? can. No, you have you to You just got to make sure right you don't up. pull up next to anyone. Oh. When you go up in a helicopter, do you wear those, the, the muffs, or do you just go, Sorry? you know what? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, just, I imagine the pressure on your eardrum. No, it's fine. Well, if you're on the, if you're on the freeway, different, okay? I'm talking okay. about cruising 50, 60 in the bird. Okay. okay. <laughs> Dion, what's your ideal window setup? Um, oh, I just reckon just maybe two, like two a little bit open at the back. That's fine. A little bit open at the front on one side. I don't want all windows really? open. Really? Yeah. See, I think Dion's way closer to the truth here. Mm. Just, I think the front two. Are yeah. down a little bit, a little and bit. then the two at the back are down a bit more. Maybe double what the, oh. the front two are down. It's quite underrated though when putting your window down. Like sometimes I have the aircon and I'll put the window down. And I'm like, oh, this is much nicer air, isn't it? It's not being yes. filtered through rubbish. Yeah. So you're you're both doing about a jar's height. <laughs> yeah, a, a well, jar. well, it's a half jar at the front yeah. and a full jar at the back. <laughs> yeah, but apparently it's like a very Eastern European thing to do to open all windows up in the morning and get fresh air in. Oh, yeah. I was wondering in sort of like Italian background or sort of more skip background, is that, um, is that, is that sort of a, <laughs> a thing to do? <laughs> is that a thing to do? Yeah, yeah, I think, well, I don't actually know much about what Italians do. I can only speak for my very Italo-Australian family. Oh. But uh, we are, we, they, they despise air conditioning. My mm. grandparents absolutely despise it. And so it's mainly a case of if... The air outside is not doing the job and you are actively sweating, like really moisture pouring off your body, Mm. then it's air conditioning. What a benchmark. Sweat rolling down your forehead. That's when it goes on. Yeah, Yeah. that's when Nonnul knows he's put enough chili in his meal. Like it's all, it all, and everything ends in sweat. He's got to have a physical bodily reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing I wanted to quickly ask you was that, um, uh, what's your favorite window? Oh, great. What's your favourite window? Because I was thinking, remember those mm. old style manual ones in the car? That'd be great to have around the house. <laughs> Imagine that. Just, crank, it, just yep. cranking it. I'll, t- I'll tell you one I don't like, which I have in, in my study, is the, it's a little crank, but it pushes like, it almost looks like a bike chain. They're not great. And yeah. it's like a bike chain that pushes the window open. Oh, God. It is so tiny. I'll tell you the problem with this one, with the key in the lock next to it, oh, my God. knuckles hit the key. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Put a bit more space. And the handle yeah. always comes off. It's so tiny. Yeah. Such a tiny It's a, tiny it's a window yeah. for kids. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you what the best thing is about those windows, the fly screen. Jeez, they're great. The fly screen is such a beautiful invention. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's car car windows should have fly screens. Why don't they? I don't know, Dion. How many flies are you getting in your car it's when you're driving around? It's not about the flies. It's about the mozzies. It's about <laughs> it's about it's about the privacy still. What? What? It's, I, I like that the, the fly you... screen still makes you feel secure. They don't give you privacy though. What from the, no, from no, the no, flies, from the flies, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting changed. Well, there's a fly. <laughs> Now it's time for Australia's favourite game show... Wheel of Fortune Cookie! Oh, wow, that Chinese meal at this Chinese restaurant was great, wasn't Mm. it? Yeah, I don't know why we're having Chinese so often. (laughs) Um, But anyway, the thing with this restaurant, uh, we've been here a lot before, but they have these fortune cookies, but there's only one word in each one, so I'll I'll crack mine first, then we'll go around. Yeah, that's why we're having Chinese. Sometimes... We think that every life is with salt. (laughs) I'm so sorry. (laughs) Sometimes we think that every life is with salt. (laughs) It's fine. It's very profound, very profound. Dion? While away, one likes... To travel to mountains high up in the buildings. <laughs> Sometimes, while away, one likes to travel 
to mountains up high in buildings. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So profound. Good stuff. Very profound. Mm, very good. And, uh, and I'll crack my cookies. Judgment doesn't always afford the best tar. <laughs> Judgment doesn't always afford the best car. <laughs> really, really good. You know what's really, really good? Really, really good. You know what's really, really good? We absolutely love hearing your really goods. So thank you to everyone who has contributed their individual really goods to our Really Good Friday. You'll see it posted every fortnight. All you have to do is comment your really good beneath the photo for your chance to have it read out on our show. Um, also, we post a lot of other rubbish stuff. <laughs> so just to make us feel a bit better, please go and comment on that. Uh, you can like and subscribe to it and share it with your friends. <laughs> but this week, do you know what Linda Dolan thinks is really good? When a dog loves you and their owner says, he doesn't usually like strangers. <laughs> really, really, good. Good. Really, really good. Really good, Linda. Really good. And you know what Gina Andriani thinks is really good? When you do a big grocery shop and bring along the exact number of reusable bags required. Yes, really, good. Really, good. Really, good. really good. Really good. Really good. Uh, and we actually have our first entrant from another podcast for Really Good. Uh, it's a podcast called Two Peas in a Podcast. It's actually a really wonderful podcast hosted by Kate and Mandy. They're two amazing mums and they've got twins with disabilities and additional needs and they interview really interesting people. So we recommend you checking them out because it's, it's an amazing podcast, Two Peas in a Podcast. But do you know what Kate and Mandy think is really good? When you don't ask your Uber driver how busy their night has been. Yeah, really, <laughs> really good. good. Really, really good. good. Really good. Oh, thank you very much for listening to another episode of Welcome to Patchwork. You've been a great audience. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much. Um, Applause. Applause, applause. Uh, Yes, as you know, we've got social media, all that stuff. We've got much more important things to talk about this week. Uh, We're doing two comedy festival shows at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Um, They're Sunday afternoon shows, 1pm on the 11th and the 18th of April. Now, we stress... Tickets will sell out. They'll sell out really fast. Um, so please get your tickets. Google Melbourne Comedy Festival. Then search for Welcome to Patchwork. Uh, and um, buy your tickets. We're at the Comedy Republic, which is a new comedy venue in the city. It's going to be heaps of fun, but make sure you get your tickets fast. And of course, now it's the time you've all been waiting yeah. for. The big reveal of the patch phrases. Um, I think mine was pretty clear. I think Josh's was pretty clear. I think it was... Um, now, that doesn't go in the tackle box. No, put... Put that back in the tackle box. Put that box. back in the tackle, <laughs> box. Tackle, box. tackle box, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. mine was, I think mine was something like, it doesn't seem to know me or something. <laughs> yeah, Dion, <laughs> Dion forgot his. <laughs> He doesn't. Right. He doesn't seem to know me. I did not catch that. At Once all, again, mate. not a nursery rhyme, not a catchphrase. <laughs> now I threw mine in very, very surreptitiously. Oh, was it before the episode? <laughs> Dion, Josh, do you know what my catchphrase was? No idea. I'm sure I laughed at the time, but I cannot remember it now. What was it? So I, <laughs> the first one went by, and I thought the no, first one, the, no, <laughs> and I was like, no reaction. Oh, okay. So I went with another one, thinking, let's see if I can get away with the second one. Yep. Got away with it. So I had three what? patchphrases. Oh. My three patchphrases were, <laughs> oh, yuck. <laughs> I don't remember that. That's not. <laughs> I, had, I had, mate, that stinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That was- and I had, jeepers creepers. <laughs> Mate, that stick. Wait, did you that say that sticks is great? Did, that, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember yeah. that. So, uh, so what we'd love to know is, please let us know your favourite. We'll put a post on our socials. We would love to know which catchphrase, <laughs> which catchphrase you would love to hear in the Maybe future. Maybe we'll just do Josh's one and then Christian's three, and then we'll leave out mine. <laughs> You do it in public, don't you? Yeah, I'll do it in public. I'll do. Oh, it to come other on, Christian, put it back in the tackle box. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> mate. That's sick. There it that is. is sick. There it is. <laughs> Yuck! <laughs> and then instantly repaired with aloe with an aloe vera plant. Yeah, that's what's happened. I reckon that's what's happened, mate. That stinks. <laughs> Just the skin right off. Tell you what, it's a lot bloodier than I expected. <laughs> Jeepers creepers! 
Same temperature every time. I should yeah. be able to get that in the car. But it doesn't seem but to think, know me. But the difference... <laughs> like the car window. And as we do every week, we sew a new patch into our quilt of friendship. Josh... What patch did you sew in our quilt this week? Thank you, Dion. My patch this week was Christian pre-messaging a restaurant to see if they have aircon, only to be told, every window open, one jar. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, what patch did you sew this week? <laughs> Thank you, Josh. This week, I sewed into my patch me, shaving so far and deeply into my <laughs> skull that I begin to reveal the falafels deep frying underneath. <laughs> and Dion, what did you sew into your patch this week? My patch this week is Christian in his brand new job delivering heavily moisturised fluffle balls <laughs> packed on board his ghost motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to Welcome to Patchwork for another week. I've been Dion. I've been Josh. And I've been Christian. Goodbye. 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 Squeaky. Oh, it was the phone. Oh, uh, phone vibrator. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So ask again. Yeah. What, what, what was the last one? What? 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 What?